What up, everyone? So, it is time for the monthly review. The monthly review for the boxes of December. And for anyone who's just tuning in, tuning in for this, to this channel for the first time, I'll go over a brief description of everything I do here and what this video is all about. But for anyone who doesn't know, I know we're well into January at this point, but um, the boxes of each month take so long to get here. December's boxes actually just finished getting here. Some just got here a few days ago. And I actually didn't have time to do reviews of every single one. Um, I was a little bit limited on time this month. And I didn't want to put off the boxes of January anymore. So I didn't want to fall behind. So some of the boxes that were just mediocre, I didn't make a separate review for them. But I'll talk about them in this video. So, anyone tuning in for the first time, uh, what this channel is all about is giving in-depth reviews. And it's just to help you find the best product out there. For this video, it's the best box out there. There's so many monthly subscription boxes. I want to help you guys out and help you to pick the best one for you. I have 15 boxes this month and I've lined them up from what I think most people would assume or what most people would... Um, based on your opinions essentially of what the worst box is and what the best box is. We'll go 15 to 1. But that doesn't necessarily mean that number 1 is number 1 for you. So that's why I'm going to go through each box because you may find one along the way that's specifically tailored towards you. So that's why I go into each one. And I'll do a brief little description, I'll show a picture of it, and I'll talk about it a little bit, talk about why it's in the place it is. And as always with any video I have, if you don't want to hear me talk and you just want to see what's in the boxes, any video I have, skip to the end of it, and you'll see nothing but pictures. So feel free to do that if you don't want to hear all the talking. Um, another thing we have to talk about is our, my giveaways. Uh, I'm going to be doing a giveaway every single month now. So every time I do a monthly review, I will announce a winner, and then I will start a new contest over, and then you guys can resubmit and do it that way. Um, since it's been so long since my last giveaway, I'm doing two uh, winners on this one because I was trying to do an 8,000 sub giveaway and it was there was a bunch of crazy shit going on with the sub count and it's finally better now and it's going back up again but it was stuck for a long time so uh, based on that I'm picking two winners one I'm gonna pick myself and one I'm gonna do at random uh, the one I've picked myself um, which is going to someone named Maria who helps me out all the time I already contacted her and found out everything she wanted and liked and I've already packed up a little box for her sitting right there I haven't shipped it yet but I'm sure she'll watch this video and she knows it's coming so that's the one I personally picked out because she's helped so much and she's always posting links to every single video I ever do even when not asked even when it's not part of a contest so she's just always very helpful so I'm sending her a box full of DC stuff uh, just for her free of charge so it'll be a really nice box for her and the other winner of my giveaway I actually didn't have time to do before this one what I do is I put everyone's name into an electronic organizer and then it picks one at random so the winner of that will be in the description at the bottom because I'll go through that as I'm editing the video. So check at the very bottom of the description. If your name is there, send me a private message and just tell me what you like. Um, whether you like Marvel versus DC, figures, uh, clothing, anything like that. Just some quick little tips on things I can put inside a box and give to you as a thank you for helping out. So that's what I'm going to do each giveaway. And if you've ever seen something on the channel you like specifically, feel free to ask for it. Uh, it's not guaranteed I'll have it still, but, you know, I, I do the best I can. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be amazing. But it's just a fun little box just to say thank you to all the people that have helped out. And just keep in mind, if you're foreign, if you're not in the U.S., the box has to be much smaller. It's not that I don't want to give you stuff. It's just shipping is crazy expensive. So keep that in mind. It's nothing personal. It's just I can't afford to send huge boxes. So that's my giveaway. And if you want to enter the next month's giveaway, all you have to do is either take this video or just the link from my channel and post it anywhere. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, doesn't matter. Just post that a link to my channel anywhere you want and then maybe a brief description of what it is so people know what to click on. Just a quick little one sentence thing on it and then send me the link. Um, there should always be a drop down menu on any social media that says share or copy URL. Just copy that and then post it in either a private message or a comment on any video and I'll see it that way and then you will be put into a drawing and then you'll um, a winner will be picked every month and a lot of times I'll do two because um, I have just plenty of stuff to give away so keep that in mind so there will be a winner in that one and feel free to jump in on these competitions there aren't a lot of people that join in it so you always have a good uh, chance of winning and for every link that you share you get one name in the hat so if you share 10 links then you'll get your name 10 times in the hat uh, to get drawn out so there's the competition. Um, so 
back to this video. What I do here, I have my little rating system, and it's called the 3V system. So I know I'm holding up four fingers. I'm not doing a three. I'm actually doing three Vs. Look, V, V, V. 3V. 3V system. And what it is is value, variety, and virtue. And it's pretty simple. Uh, the first one, value, what you're getting out of the box, what you're paying for that box versus what you're getting from it. So ideally, in a perfect world, you'd get double what you paid for. So that gives you leeway in there in case you don't like something, you're not losing a bunch of money. So that gives you a little wiggle room because chances are you're not going to like at least one thing in a mystery box. It's impossible to make it perfect for everyone. So that's value. Variety. Um, Pretty simple as well. Uh, what kind of variety of stuff do you get? Do you get exclusive stuff? Do you get stuff that's like well thought out, well like in theme and put has a good theme to it? Or do you get like generic crap that you're going to find at like Walmart that everyone puts in boxes? So that's variety. And the third one is virtue. And this one I just couldn't come up with a better word that starts with a V. But essentially this is like business ethics. And this is how the company handles themselves. Do they package things well? Is it well presented? Um, do things show up damaged? Do they show up well? If it is damaged, do they replace it? How they handle things? How's their customer service? How's their response time? If you message them, how long does it take to come back? And usually you wouldn't think that this is very important. But through my years of doing this, I found it, it is very important. Because I've had certain situations and those who have watched me a long time know with my problem with the UK and their boxes that I've gone through so much trouble it's not even worth it anymore. I ended up getting free boxes but I would rather have not dealt with all the trouble than get the free boxes. It totally wasn't worth it to me. So that's what I base it off of. And also keep in mind that all these values and the placement here is always based on your guys' opinions. You always talk in the comments. You always let me know what you think. I always have you guys interact. So it's based on your guys' opinions, not my own. I'll always give my opinion, but it's not based on that. So it's always based on the uh, consumer, you guys, the viewer, and the mass of everyone. So it's always the popular opinion, and that's what I try to base it on. But at the end of the day, it's not a perfect system, so don't get too caught up. At the end of the day, I'm just trying to help out. That's all this is really about. And I'm not trying to complain. I'm not complaining about any of these boxes. Nothing here is meant to be a complaint. It's just a review. So after that long-winded speech, keep in mind, I talk way too much. So if you don't want to hear me talk, like I said, end of the video, pictures. I'm getting terrible cotton mouth from talking so much. So no more talking. Let's get right on to it. Let's start with number 15. Number 15 was shirt block. This was an easy one to pick. The number, the last one's usually pretty always easy to spot out. And this just wasn't a, a good box. I, I didn't like it at all. I don't really have anything positive to say about it. They way overcharge for it. It's a $40 box. It's a bunch of shirts and that's it, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. If you want shirts, go for it. But it's just a bunch of random designs. There's never any theme. If they had a theme where it was like, this is video game shirts or this is comic book shirts, then it'd be different. But they have no theme. It's totally random shirts put in there. And everyone kind of agreed in the comments. It just seems like they're putting in stuff that they can't sell on their own website. And that seems like what it is. Shirts that aren't selling well, so they just put them in a box and ship them to you and overcharge for it. And you get five shirts for $40, which isn't even a really good deal. You're so much better off taking $40 and going to like Target or Walmart where you can try on shirts, pick out the exact designs you want so you know you love them, and probably get the same amount of shirts for the same price. And if they had a, a deal going on, you'd probably get more than that of much better quality. These shirts were like subpar quality at best. And a lot of the designs just weren't that great anyway. So this is a total waste of time, total waste of money. I would not recommend this box to anyone. Um, this is one of the only times this comes up. I usually have some positive things to say and some people I'd recommend it to. This one, nobody. I don't think anyone should buy this. I don't think it's worth anyone's time or money. There's really no point to this box unless they start to change it up and give more options on what you can do, like shirts versus tank tops, themes, things you may like, genres you may like. They can do that, maybe. But until then, total waste of time. Don't even bother with it. Shirt block, ass block. There you go. You heard it first. All right. Number 14, Doo -doo -doo. and that would be Nerd Block Jr. And you know, I don't really have anything bad to say about this box. It's obviously geared more towards kids, but like I said in the individual review, it's a very fine line between like 
adult collecting and kid collecting. Like, there's some things that are very obviously one or the other, but some things that are kind of in the middle. Like, this one came with a shirt. They all come with a shirt. These, a lot of times, come with figures. Most all of them come with figures. And it's like, it, it's kind of the same stuff. So that's why I wanted to try it out. But a lot of the things in there um, were definitely, it's more interactive stuff is what it is. And the reason, the only reason it's lower on the countdown is because there's no resale value on any of the items in there. And I don't want to base everything off of that because that's not what getting a box is about. It's not what you can sell it for because I don't recommend trying to make money on any of these boxes. So that's not what it's about. But the only reason I bring that up is you want to know that there is resale value just in case. Not that you're planning to sell it, but just knowing that if you get something you don't like that you can sell it and maybe recoup some of your losses, it's just a good thing to have. It's just a reassuring thing to know that you can trust in a company because even if you don't like something, which is bound to happen, you can flip it or at least make your money back or something like that. So this is mostly interactive stuff, but if you happen to not like something, you definitely couldn't make money back because none of this stuff would sell online. You'd have a very hard time selling anything in there. And that's why it gets lower on the countdown. I think, with, same with shirt blog, I think you're better off taking that same amount of money and going to like Michael's or Target and buying your own interactive stuff to do with your kids. So I think you're better off doing that or buying cheaper clearance stuff at any store than putting money into this block. So not that it's bad, like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. I think people that get it for their kids would be fine with it, but it's just not really a big deal. I don't think anyone would be going out of their way to get this. So it was okay, but I don't think it's worth the money. I don't think it's worth your time. You're better off getting your own stuff. So that's why I got lower on the counter. Next, number 13. And here we got Loot Crate DX. Boom. Can I say? So yeah, um, this one I'm I'm almost positive is not going to stay around any longer. I've been talking about canceling it for a long time. I've already paid for next month so it'll show up. But And again, this isn't a bad box. It's nothing bad about it. It's just too much money to risk every month. And they're not giving that money back. They're not giving good value. Loot Crate, the normal Loot Crate, is great about giving value. They always give double, sometimes even triple the value you pay. They're fantastic about giving value. But DX, quite the opposite. It's more than double the price. It's almost triple the price of the normal Loot Crate. And they don't give anywhere near double your value. You're lucky to get 50% more than what you paid for. Which is fine. It's not that you're, It's not that money's going to waste. But if you don't like even one thing, then you're down to like even paying what you want. If you don't like two things, now you're losing money. It's just too, there's not enough buffer zone there. You're not making, there's not enough value past what you paid to give you enough buffer zone. And everything I've always seen from this box has always been fine. It's not been bad products, but it's never been great. I've never gotten this box and been like, wow, that's so amazing. And this box in particular, we got three wearable things. We got, well, I guess you can count four. We got a hat from Mr. Robot, we got the scarf from Assassin's Creed, and we got a belt buckle. That's all three things that this almost was like the loot wear box. And then the pin, I, I don't know, you could consider that wearable, I don't know what else you consider it, also from Mr. Robot. So we got two things from Assassin's Creed, two things from Mr. Robot, so there was just like, and it was mostly wearable stuff, so there just wasn't a lot of variety there. They really limited themselves. It came with a cool figure though, McFarlane Toys, I'm a big fan of all their stuff. They do a quite a fantastic job. This one, the it's an exclusive, but it's like, it was a gray version of it, and it's supposed to be the artist proof, but never been a fan when they paint figures one solid color and call it a variant, because it's like, that's kind of dumb. If I wanted it gray, I'd buy the normal one and take spray paint and gray it out myself. Like, it's it just doesn't make it that special. I still like McFarlane and what he does, but that specific figure is like, I would have rather just had the colored version and it had been not exclusive. And it didn't go for a ton of money, and it ne most of the stuff never does. So there's just, like I said, it's too much money to, money to risk. It ends up being like $55 after all is said and done, and you're lucky to make like another, have it be worth another 25 after that. I need to stop saying make money, but have it be worth another 25 after that. And that's just, it's too much to risk and not enough buffer. And it's just, it's always just been okay. And that's all I've ever said about it. So too much money to risk. So I need to move on from this and try out new stuff because there's so many better boxes out there that I could get for that same value. And if I did like anything, which I didn't really, I could have just bought it individually online and yeah, that's that's what it is with that. Too much money, not really worth it. 
And it's really weird because Loot Crate usually does a really good job, but their DX one, never been. So that's what I didn't do a personal video on because it just wasn't worth it to do a video. There was nothing really to say about it. But anyway. So, next, number 12. We got the Stan Lee box. So a box that sounds really good in theory, and it actually was. I actually really liked all the items in here. It was all good stuff, but same problem with Loot Crate DX. It's just too much money to risk. I think I have the value on here. Um, yeah, it's ended up being like a 50, I think it was also 55 or 50, something like that, like a $50 box, and you barely get double the value. You, you, probably not even that. You probably got close to about... 50% more than you paid for. And it's the same exact problem. It's just, that's fine. It's fine to get 50% more, especially when you like all the stuff, but that's just a lot of money to be gambling with every month on a mystery box. I trust Stan Lee, and he's a cool guy, and he puts out good stuff, but only one thing in there was exclusive, and that was the comic. All the other stuff, it was good stuff, but it was stuff you could find in stores. So there wasn't a lot of, nothing special to it. There wasn't a lot of variety. It was all common stuff. So I'm gonna stick with it for a little while, because I'm thinking the more notoriety it gets, the more money they get in, the more exclusives we'll get. And if anyone's getting exclusives, I'd want it to be like from Marvel and Stan Lee. If they do do exclusives, I have a feeling they're going to be fantastic. But until they do, this box is just going to be okay. It's worth it, and you'll like everything in there. It's all, all really good stuff, so it's not a waste. So I like that, but it's just a ton of money. So that's just the only reason it got lower. But I have high hopes for it. I think this box will do better in the future. I think which with each passing month, it will get better and better. So I'm going to stay hopeful for it. But it's just very risky. So we'll see what comes from that. Stanley. Alrighty. Number 11. The collector's case. So this one did fine as well. It was a Pokemon themed one and not too many people capitalize on that. There's been like no Pokemon boxes with the exception of this and the one Lutaku box, which is crazy because Pokemon's so popular even to this day and there's so many collectibles for it. They just released a new game. There's Pokemon Go. I can't believe more boxes aren't capitalizing on it. I think that's very odd to me. But this one, um, it did overly generic stuff this time around. Uh, it was just very common stuff. Nothing from it was exclusive. Unless you got the signed autograph thing. That was really cool. So if you got that, bonus. But everything else was just things you could find in stores or find online very common. It was cards and a figure and a blanket. All cool stuff. I liked it. I love Pokemon. I love everything to do with it. But it was just very easily found stuff. You got decent value though. You got pretty much double what you paid for. But they also had like party favors in there where it's like that has no resale value. And it's, you can't really use it unless you happen to be planning a Pokemon party, which I don't know how many people are, but it's just not very practical stuff, and there wasn't a lot of, um, like I said, no resale market for it, but it was still cool to see a Pokemon box, so I, I'm still happy with this company, I like their boxes, and I'm, I'm excited to see where they go, and you can see them progressively getting better and better as the company goes on, but I think they should steer away from like party favors and dollar store stuff, and try to head towards the exclusivity, and maybe focus more on the autographs, because that's definitely a high market there. There's a lot of people that look into that stuff. So there we go. Oh, mouth getting so dry again. Number 10. Nerd Block Classic. Hold on, i got to refer to my pictures here. So this one, this, this we're getting around that middle range, and here we're going to see a lot of the um, Nerd Block boxes. And they're always right around the middle. They almost always give exactly the same value, which is kind of freaky. I've never seen a box be so precise about giving value ever. And they always give that $50 to $60 range, always. It's, it's pretty incredible how they're always spot on with that value, no matter what the market is. It's very strange, actually. But you can always count on them to give you right around that value. It's almost always, with the exception of Shirt Block and Junior, of course, but these ones, it's always a $30 box, and you get right around $50, $60 value. And they've been really good about giving all exclusives lately. Um, but they have, they have a lot of similarities between the boxes. And um, this month, we got a lot of pencil holders and things like that. And we got, like, lanyards. So this one was like a, it was a Star Wars-themed box, but it had a Transformers shirt. And things in here were just way too common. We got coasters a lanyard, a shirt, a mug, 
and what was the other one? A coin bank, which is a little bit rare, but it was just very, very common stuff. Stuff we've seen in boxes a million times, and of genres we've seen a million times. So it was fine. It was worth the money, but it was just very common stuff. But it was exclusive, but just commonly things like mugs and lanyards and stuff like that. So it was worth it, but it's in the middle range. Like, you may like it, you may not, but it's still worth a try. So try it out if you like. There it is. All right, number nine is horror block and i actually wanted to talk about one thing in here just for people's information and that is actually the grab block so i'm sure a lot of people have been curious about this um when you're signing up for any nerd block they give you the option of getting a grab block for ten dollars and you kind of i think you get to choose the theme and i chose the horror one someone had told me you get a previous block and I said, I don't think that's the case, and I was right. So what you get is a, you get to pick the genre. I picked horror because I haven't gotten a lot of the boxes. I've only gotten like two or three of them, so I thought chances were I wouldn't get things I already had. And what you're going to get with this is pretty much what you're always going to get from NerdBlock when they have a deal, and that's leftover crap that they have. It's going to be a bunch of stuff that they couldn't sell, so they give you a cheap block. And the same thing they did with the band box where they said they give you a free block. It's just things that didn't sell. So one month, if they don't sell out of boxes, they have nothing to do with that stuff. They're not going to repeat it because people hate that. I hate that. And so they sell these blocks for like half price, and it's just things that didn't sell. And it's like, if someone else didn't want it, why would I? Like, it doesn't really matter. So the funny thing was that it came with a shirt, and I've only gotten this block two or three times in the past two years since it's been out, and I actually got a shirt I already had. Like, what are the, what are even the odds of that? Like... 24 shirts they do in a year and I've gotten two of them and I happened to get one of the two I already had So it was just kind of a mod podge of stuff that they've already done in previous boxes that they just had extra stuff in there They put no effort to put it together. It's not that big a deal because it ends up being um, It's ten dollars and I think they charge for shipping so it ends up being 20 bucks So it's not that great of a deal and it's just all leftover crap So if, if anyone's curious about that I wouldn't really waste your money. Like, I don't think it's worth it. Um, even though it's only ten bucks plus shipping, it ends up being a lot more when you add shipping to it, and it, it's still worth it. But just keep in mind, it's not going to be great stuff. It's going to be leftover crap, like I said. So I thought that was just worth mentioning in case anyone's curious about getting those grab blocks. That's what it is. It's not a past box. It's not a future box. It's a mod podge. So there you go. On to the horror block. I thought they did a decent job. Uh, but nothing super impressive. You got a good mix of stuff. I like the flask. I thought the flask was cool, but um, you, we've seen a lot of flasks before. And honestly, how many flasks do you really need? Just kind of one. And other than that, it was stuff. Like, we got another pencil holder, and it's like, who's holding pencils these days? Who has a bunch of pencils? And we got a candle, which is cool. It sets the mood. A mouse pad. Very common. We get tons and tons of mouse pad. A magazine. I'm not a big fan of magazine stuff, because... All that stuff you can find online, It's all that information is readily available, so it's kind of weird to pay for magazines in this day and age. And the shirt was okay, so it was fine. You got the normal $50 to $60 value. You got a good mix of stuff, but nothing crazy spectacular about it. So we're in that middle range where it's like, okay, good box, worth it. Nothing to complain about, but nothing amazing either. So right in that middle, and that's kind of where it belongs. And I've only tried this out a few times, but... Uh, I probably won't try it out again until maybe next year when they do another Black Friday sale. And that's the usual thing. Nothing more to say. Alright. Number eight. At the halfway point. That was my time. Pretty low. Okay. So we got Loot Crate here. And I really wasn't impressed with this month's Loot Crate. It was it was not bad, but it's just not that impressive. And as far as the items, we already didn't get a lot of items. There was only five items total. And one was a patch and one was a pin. Usually we just get one or the other with the exception of the Funko boxes. But there's more, usually more items than that. So with the patch and pin taken out, you really only got three items. And every box comes with a shirt so that you can almost take that one out. So then it was down to like two items. And one was a book and that's just like so overly common and worth nothing. So then it was like, well, when you really think about it, it was just kind of about that one item, which was the pop figure. It was exclusive, so that's good. It was a good pop figure. But it was also the movie version of Assassin's Creed, which didn't sell very high. So 
Not a lot of items. The value wasn't that great. It was one of the first times we got less than double the value, which is weird from Loot Crate. And I don't know. They, they just didn't seem to do that great this month. There was not much, nothing bad about it. I wouldn't complain about any of these specific items, but nothing spectacular either. They're usually in like the top three or top five at least. I've never seen them this low, so I, I was pretty surprised. So this is what it gets this month, but normally they're a great box. For only 20 bucks, they usually give fantastic value and good variety, but this month just didn't really hit it home. And not much more to say about it. Alrighty. Running out of time. Halfway point. I'm gonna stop the camera. Hold up. Sorry about that. Camera shuts off after a half an hour, so I had no choice but to stop it. Alright. Back to the countdown. So, number seven. We got Arcade Block. The last arcade block to ever exist. Um, for those of you who don't know, the company's changing. Arcade Block to Gamer Block, and they have two versions. They have the E for Everyone Block and the M for Mature Gamer Block. So two of them. Hopefully they don't share items. I'm going to try them both out next month and see what the differences are to let you guys know. But this is the last Arcade Block. I don't really think they needed to split into two, but I guess people have been requesting it from what they said. But I don't really know. I didn't have any requests. But I always liked this one, and this one was pretty good. Had a good mix of like a little bit modern and a little bit classic, so a good mix there. I like that. And I'm hoping that's what the blocks will do. I'm hoping the E block will stick to more classics and the M block will stick to more current games. I'm hoping that's what they'll do, but who knows. And um, something in here, they, we had a glass candle holder, which I don't think we've ever seen in a box before, but I don't know how many people are that into like big candle holds, but it was very nicely done. It had a cool design on it. It was made of glass, so it was good quality and it sells for a decent amount. We also got a really cool Mega Man book that went through all the characters. I really wish it was hardcover because I like the book, but we got that. The shirt was cool from Overwatch, had a decent design, got a little light. I didn't really care too much for the plush. I usually don't, but you know, it was a good mix of stuff. You got good value. It, it was a good representation of old versus new. So I think they did a good job. And now we're right above that halfway point where it's like, yeah, it, it, pretty good. I, I wasn't disappointed with it. Good value, good variety. And I'm pretty sure everything in there was all exclusive from what I saw. So yeah, really no complaints about it. I thought they did a good job, but we'll see where the company goes. It's tough to say like, I'm showing this one off, but I have no idea. They're splitting into two and doing gamer block. I have no idea. That could go horribly wrong, but we'll see. So it's the it, last arcade block we'll ever see. There it goes. Bye, arcade block. I was wondering why they didn't change the box for that. Now I know. All right. Next. Number six. Sci-fi block. So pretty much the same as the arcade block. I thought they, they did all exclusive stuff. Everything in there was exclusive. And we got a decent mix of stuff. We got another pencil holder. I don't know what their fucking deal was with pencil holders this month. But every box needed a pencil holder. So in case anyone has like 2,000 pencils, now you got holders for all of them. But the good news is the pencil holder was of the Death Star. And I thought it honestly made like a cool little drinking glass or maybe even a shot glass. So I'm not going to use it as a pencil holder, but I always repurpose things. So that's pretty cool. And it had a necktie in here. And I know a lot of people aren't that into neckties, but I actually wear ties all the time. So I thought that was really cool too. I always like creative ties. And we got a shirt. I really like the design on it. It was a 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And even if you're not like a sci-fi or fantasy nerd, um, excuse me, I think most people would still get that reference. And it, either way, it's still a really cool design. And 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, like the whole giant squid and sub thing, is such an iconic picture. So I thought they did a good job th um, doing that. The only thing I didn't really like was they did the Borg uh, puzzle cube which is a Rubik's Cube that looks like the Borg Cube from Star Trek, which I thought was so pointless because the designs on the, the patterns on the side look exactly the same. I don't know how anyone could ever solve that, but maybe it's not meant to be solved because it's going for a decent amount. I wrote it down on here, but yeah, it was 10 bucks, but still way more than I thought it was going for. So people are actually wanting to collect that, which really surprised me because I thought it was really dumb, but people liked it and people are willing to pay for it. So who am I to say? Then we got some shot glasses that were from Terminator and a nice uh, Starfleet pin from um, Starship Troopers, I think it was. Do, do, do. Yeah, which I thought was a really cool movie, so I thought they did a good job. Good representation. This box has sucked for so long, so this is the only time where it's been like, okay, I think they're finally starting to get a hold of things. But the one uh, problem I have with this is it's called Sci-Fi Block, but they very often stray into the fantasy side of things. And that's fine, but I feel like they should just call it sci-fi fantasy block because it, they're 
a lot of times they're similar. A lot of movies are both sci-fi and fantasy. It's, it's a very, very thin line, like a blurred line that kind of separates the two. There is definite separation, and I can go into a whole separate video talking about what the differences are, but I've always been more of a sci-fi fan and much less of a fantasy fan. So when they stray into the fantasy, I'm like, well, that's not what I would hope for in a sci-fi block, but it's sometimes it's tough to say like which movie's which, but I think they should just call it sci-fi fantasy so there's no confusion. But I thought they did a decent job, and you got decent value, so there we go. All right, moving along. Number five, the Bam Box. So they had a rough month last month, but I thought they did much better this month. Not perfect, far from it, but I'm, I have really high hopes for their anniversary block. Um, and they've been promoting it left and right, their anniversary box, and they have a, they're have they supposed to have a bunch of really cool stuff that they're bringing back from the past year. And from what I've heard, Chris Uminga is going to be making an appearance, so I'm super excited for that. He's one of my favorite artists, so if he does another signed and numbered print, I hope I get it. Hope I don't get the alternate one, or I hope everyone gets a Chris Uminga, because he is a really amazing artist, and he does awesome stuff, so I'm psyched to see that. And I also think they're putting in Jason Mask again, I already had one, so I, I don't care if I get another one. But they're putting in that again, so the anniversary box should do good. But this one, they did a decent job. We got some signatures from some uh, a decently known actress and a signed comic. But the art print was really good, and I really like the swords that they came with. And the I think they did a great job in their pins. Their pins are very highly collectible. I think they have a big market for their pins, and I want to get some made like that. Fanbox is watching. Hook me up with your pin designer, because I want some. But yeah, I thought overall it was good, and I think they do a really good job about getting signed stuff, and they always sign and number the artwork, which is so, so appreciated. That's really cool that they do that. No other box really does it as well as they do, so I really like that. They focus on signed stuff and like exclusives, so they do a good job at that, and I thought they did a decent job this month. And I'm excited for next month when they do their anniversary box, so here's to hoping the best for that. So there we go, number five. All right. Number four was the Marvel Collector Core. So a box we only see every other month. And this one we actually had an X-Men themed one, which most people were surprised about because um, Marvel's kind of anti-X-Men because they don't own the production rights to it. But every once in a while we'll see a little gem like this. So I'm, that makes me hopeful that the uh, X-Men will appear in Marvel vs. Capcom. But that's a different story. But I thought this is cool because they didn't just do a standard pop. It's like so common that these are full of pop figures. And it's fine, but it just gets too generic at times. So we got a pop ride, which was Logan on his motorcycle, which I thought was really cool. I thought they did a good job. Changed it up a little bit with that, which I thought was good. Then we got a rock candy of Mystique, which changed it up a little bit too, which I really liked. And the shirt wasn't another pop shirt, which was cool. Patch and pin were badass. I liked those as well. And then the comic was kind of crappy. The comic had a stupid cover, but that, that was the only thing I had to complain about. But I thought they did a good job. Good value. They mixed it up with some variety a little bit. I'm happy to see X-Men. I think they could do another X-Men box, to be quite honest, because they only touched on like maybe a third of the X-Men members, if even that. There's so many more members that didn't even get a mention. So I think they could redo another X-Men box and do totally different characters and be fine and still keep people happy. Which I honestly think they should do that because a lot of people were mad that a certain X-Men didn't show up in there. Me included. I was always hoping for someone and then they didn't show up. Body blah, blah. But anyway, I like that. So I think they did good on that. There we go. Next. Number three. Mm -hmm. Comic block. Big surprise here. One of the boxes I've been hoping would do good for so long because it sucked for a really long time too. When it came out, it was just awful. But I had such high hopes that I was hoping it would get good, and it finally kind of is. It's not getting great, but it's getting better. And that's the kind of box I want, a comic-themed box. I want someone to do it well, where it's not like just Marvel or d just DC. That's all around a comic box. And this is the only one that's ever come close to it. Everyone else that's tried has failed miserably and sucked bad. So the comics in here um, were worth a decent amount. 
Like I said in the video, the box value got a crazy high value, over $100. And I said, without a doubt, these prices will come down. And no surprise, they did. So I was totally right on that. The prices came down pretty substantially, but not that, not as much as I thought, to be quite honest. Even with the lower values on the comics, they still held their value pretty decently to this day. And this came arrived like a good three weeks ago, if not longer. So if they're still holding value at this point, that's pretty decent. And even with the drop prices, I redid the math, and you still got tremendous value on this. And I love the fact that we got a bombshell in there, and I have it right there. And we're getting two more, one in January and one in February, which I'm on board for, like 100%. And I think we're getting um, Catwoman, and we're getting Ivy, I think. But it's a totally exclusive figure with a unique paint job, so I'm super psyched about that because I really love that series. I think it's a fantastic series, and that really made this a special box. Other than that, everything else in there was, was all exclusive. Uh, we got exclusive comics. Um, one of the covers of the comics, and I talked about this in the video, was the Red Sonya one, which wasn't an exclusive cover, but Nerdblock set put a little thing that said presented by Nerdblock printed on there. So technically speaking, that is an exclusive cover. Even though it just, the only difference is presented by Nerdblock, technically speaking, it's printed on there. So that's a separate print. So technically, it's an exclusive cover. But it's still pretty much non-exclusive. It's a kind of a weird gray area. But other than that, it was all exclusive and they did a good job. It came with a cool shirt. The print was Harley Quinn, and that was really cool too. So I think they did a really great job. So I'm hopeful for this company. Pretty much all the other nerd blocks are getting canceled. I'm going to keep the arcade and the classic, and I'm keeping this one because I want this to be good, and they've been doing a good job. So I really liked it, and I think they did well, and I'm so psyched for more bombshells. So count me in for that. So I really like that very much. Comic block. Next, top two. Here we go. Number two, surprisingly, the Sanrio gift box from Loot Crate. And this is called their Small Gift Crate, I believe. Loot Crate, yeah, Small Gift. That's what it's called. So this is very surprisingly up there. But when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. So, um, like I said before, I do these box ratings based on the mass market, based on what most people will like. So keep in mind, this box is not for everyone. It's for a very limited market. But... It's very clearly a Sanrio box. There's no, excuse the pun, no surprise in the Sanrio surprise box. Like, it was very obviously geared towards that. You'd be an idiot to not know it wasn't Sanrio. So, only the people that would purchase this would have to have some interest in Sanrio. So, since it's very clearly stated that's what it is, although it's a limited market, I can base the value and opinion based on that market because it's very clearly stated. So this is obviously only for Sanrio fans. So not for everyone, but of those fans, the people that got it, I think would very much like it because it got tremendous value, very, very high value, more than double what you paid. Even with the high $40 ticket price, you still got more than you paid for. And the good thing about this box, even if you're not a Sanrio fan, if you happen to buy it, Everything in these boxes is extremely marketable. So Sanrio has a huge, especially Hello Kitty, has a huge, huge, huge following. One of the most popular characters in the world, just out there, next to like Mickey Mouse and Ronald McDonald as some of the most recognizable characters on the planet. Hello Kitty is everywhere. So the good news is, if you got this box, you would have no problem selling any of this stuff because it is so sought after and so collectible. Will that continue as the box goes on? I'm not totally sure. It's only every other month, so I can't see the market getting too oversaturated, but it very easily can because Loot Crate is so popular. So we'll see in the future if it holds that. But everything in here was pretty valuable and everything in here sold without a problem and tons of people wanted it, so it's very for a very small market, but there's, it hit all the spots. You got good variety, got all exclusive stuff, got good value, and the company did just fine on the box. So really nothing to complain about. Like I said, limited market, but of that market, pretty much everyone will like it. So that's why it gets higher on the countdown. So there we go. Sanrio Surprise Box. All right, best for last. Here we go. Number one was Lutaku. And this is quite a fantastic box. They did their Dragon Ball box, and I also found out they're going to be doing a third Dragon Ball box. To continue, they said it's a three-part series of the 30th, 30th anniversary for Dragon Ball. And to that I say, yes, I am 
okay with that, you have my vote, please continue. Proceed with what you were doing. So I'm totally on board with that because they did a fantastic job with this box. They did a great job with the last Dragon Ball box. The only thing that's the, I wouldn't say complaint, but the only downside to this is it is a very expensive box because of shipping. It's a foreign box. It comes from Hong Kong, so shipping kind of kills it a little bit. But the good news is they are dropping the price, and they said it should have no effect on what's in the box. They're dropping the shipping price by, I think, $3, and the box price by another couple dollars. Small increments, but will make a big difference when you're getting this box every month. So no box for January, but in February we'll see one. But yeah, they did a great job of picking really high-end stuff. Very well-done sculptures from very well-established companies. So they've done a really good job. And the cool thing about this is, variety is off the charts, because you're getting stuff you're not seeing here in America. You're getting stuff that you're only seeing in Japan and China, and things that are only there or you have to find online. So it's really cool to not see generic crap all the time, because some of these boxes are just like, a shirt, a pop figure, a mug, a lanyard, and it's like, that's cool, but... I have 200 shirts, I have a million lanyards, and it's it just it's nice to break the monotony every once in a while. And this box definitely does it. Things you're not seeing here, high-end stuff, sculptures, not action figures, like really cool stuff, and they've always done a great job. If they can keep dropping that price, and if they can, they get pretty close to double the value, but like I said, shipping kills it. But if they can start getting double the value, which they have before, then this box is going to be unstoppable because they, they just really put out great product. And this box sold out almost immediately. I've never seen any other box sell out so quickly as this Dragon Ball box. Like, it really sold out quick. So they're doing just fine. They're putting out great product. And I've always had fine time with customer service. Like, they always comment on my videos, too. Like, I don't ask them to. They just literally take the time. They watch my videos. They read other people's comments. And they help with problems just, like, right there. Like, who am I, like, that they come and do that for me? Like, that's pretty awesome. That just shows the amount of customer service they're going to. They're actually going out of their way to seek people out and help them with problems that they didn't even know they had. So that's pretty amazing, too. So all around great company, really good product, uh, a lot for shipping, but that's the only downside to it. Other than that, it was really fantastic. So well-deserved for the number one spot. So there you have it. There was the countdown of 15 boxes. Yes, I know this video is crazy long, but deal with it. So, um, yeah, just let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns. I always read every single comment out there, so feel free to ask questions. And if there's something you want to see, always let me know. I'd be happy to create a whole video based around a certain topic. I've been doing that a lot lately, trying to help you guys out with the Collection 101 series. So, as always, if there's anything that you'd like to see, feel free to jump in on the contest. And those contest winners, please contact me and let me know what you want or need. And... We'll go from there. So I hope this helped you out. At the end of the day, at the end of each video, I hope it helped you out a little bit because that's my only job. That's the only thing I'm looking to do. Help you guys out like you help me out and just keep the community rolling. It's all positivity. It's all good things. So let's keep that ball rolling and let's keep that momentum. Um, as always, thank you all so much for watching and supporting. Please feel free to, free to like and subscribe any video and I'll see you in the comments. Love you all so much. Peace.